Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome back to Chefable Channel. Today I'm here in Stitli Balti, Birmingham uh, with my very good friend Shabuddin, today host and Shabai and also I have my good friend, my brother uh, Mahmoud. So they both are professional. Uh, they, he does um, the ecosystem for the restaurant and he does the marketing. So I bring both brothers together and also uh, shop by running uh, Bangladeshi restaurants many years, it's more than 30 years now. He has experience with the restaurant trade and he also used to run his own restaurant. Now he do marketing uh, for the restaurant. Shabai is when I start my business in Warsaw uh, four years ago. He support me lots. So thank you Shabai you uh, for your support. And uh, as always you support everyone, I you know. And uh, so that's why I come here today to introduce my viewers about uh, you know, the Bangladeshi restaurant, how you run, how we found after COVID and everything. Can you give us some more information about your restaurant <coughs> and about the, and also uh, what you do, you know, the ecosystems mm -hmm. and what is gonna uh, impact in the Bangladeshi restaurants if I have a EPOS or if I don't have EPOS. So, and first tell about more your restaurants and yourself. Thank you, Abu Bai, for Welcome. introducing me here and coming to my humble little restaurant. Thank you, um, it's nice, lovely restaurant. Thank you for the introduction. Yes, I try and help everybody as much as I can. Thank you. You're a person worthy of helping. You're a kind with person. Journey. Um, <laughs> with regards to um, answering your question in, re uh, in regards to the Indian restaurant trade, I found that over the course of 30 years, the restaurant scene has changed considerably. It's a lot, lot different now to how it used to be. So many years ago, when we first opened this restaurant in the early 90s, Bangladeshi guys like myself, my brothers, we were able to go to highly populated areas. We were able to open a restaurant. At that time, we had to call it an Indian restaurant because not everybody knows uh, about the knew, Bangladesh. Yeah, thing. knew about Bangladesh. Now, people are understanding that Bangladesh is a separate country and almost 85, 90% of the Indian restaurants in this country are actually Bengali owned. So we can actually promote ourselves as Bangladeshi restaurants. Um, to emphasize that point, I will say to you that I've just recently changed the menu here. And alongside changing the menu, I've introduced favorite Bangladeshi dishes such as Uribisi Dimas. It's on the menu, it's a very good seller. Isa Tenga, um, a dish that every child up and down the country yeah, loves. Um, and then we've also got dishes like um, Gushapura, Gushapura as well. Yeah, that is very popular. And also, we've changed the cooking style here. I'm just going to tell you a little bit. I've had to change the cooking style simply because I've noticed that the dining scene over the last 30 years has completely changed. When Indian restaurants, Bangladeshi restaurants first popped up in the United Kingdom alongside the Chinese, there was only a choice of Indian, Chinese, or fish and chips. That's what people could choose from to eat on a regular basis, on a weekly basis. So it wasn't that difficult then. But now, since 2005, um, there's been a big influx of world cuisine, where you've got Portuguese, Mexican, uh, Argentinian Turkish. steakhouse, Turkish, Arabian, all of these kind of cuisines that's come into um, the UK. And the other thing is, none of these cuisines cater to the British taste. The way that the original Bangladeshi owners uh, of Indian restaurants actually did back then. So the consumer now understands authentic tastes. He wants to or she wants to try proper Indian food, as they say, the way we have it at home. Yes. Yeah, which is why I introduced the Tenga, the Shapura, the Uri Bisimas, because these are dishes that yeah. we're loving, our kids are loving, and we're having them at home. So now that the consumer understands this, it's up to us as restaurateurs to start giving them what they want. Mm. Yeah, so I've changed the menu recently and I have to say to you that they've, my customers have absolutely loved it. You know, they, very successful. <laughs> very successful. They are enjoying these dishes and they're able to go back and they're talking to their friends saying, I went to this restaurant and he served this dish. His son told me that he had that at home the day before. Mm. You know, this is the kind of food that we want. And if we don't give it to them, somebody else is going no, to give it to them. Yeah. So we need to give it to them. So that's a part of the changing dining scene that has been happening here since maybe about 2005, 2006. Can you touch upon uh, the limited menu choice as well to that? Yeah, we need to, the other aspect of um, restaurants, if we're going to talk about 
restaurant suffering. Uh, Shabai, this has been uh, nearly more than 30 years, mm. this uh, restaurant. 29. 20, 29 this years. year will be 30. 30, okay. Mm. Congratulations for the 30th <laughs> anniversary. So, the brother, we, we'll know about more about the marketing from my brother Muhammad. So, he does the marketing for the restaurant uh, and also he used to run the restaurant. So, uh, I believe you visit a lot of restaurants for the, your marketing purpose. Yes. So, can uh, you tell about the viewers more about the oh. marketing? Then we'll know about the impose after us. I've worked in the Indian restaurant market uh, since I was 13, so I'm quite familiar with the trade. And over the past five, six years, I've helped hundreds of businesses market themselves on platforms such as Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Snapchat. And what I've come to understand is before it was almost a choice whether you can market yourself or not on these platforms, and now it's come to a point where it's almost imperative. You have to do it, and if you're not doing it, then you need to get a professional in to do it for you, because all your customers are constantly swiping. They stop at a traffic light, what they do, they pull the phone out and they swipe in. Wherever they are, they're constantly swiping, and if you're not being at the forefront of that swiping, then unfortunately, you're losing out, yeah. you know. And one of the things is, one of the key things you'd have to understand whilst marketing yourself is, You've got to use great imagery, video content has to be engaging and you've got to really respond to the customer so when they're dropping a review and they're dropping comments you've got to be on top of responding to these comments because if you're not once or twice they'll message and then eventually they just won't bother because you're not interacting with them mm. and unfortunately some other company restaurant will and then unfortunately you've lost that customer. Mm. Uh, personally, I know about the shop by he's very good on replying the customers and uh, you know the, he's very good on the social media as well. He's very active. Yes, so yeah. bring the customer in. Mm -hmm. So now these days uh, uh, as a restaurant, I have to be very active on social marketing. That's right. So yes. Then I can get, it used to be like, uh, you, you remember, we just uh, rely on flying. Yeah. And that's... newspaper ad, mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, then we don't bother anything. What's the reply coming, good or bad? So now you have to work on the tip advisor. You have to work on the Google reviews. You have to, uh, you have to reply on times, uh, customer messages and everything. So is uh, some more we as a restaurant we have to be more focused on it now That's it's right, not, yeah. if you be like a backward or oh, customer will coming and we open a nice restaurant we don't do anything just invest money to the doesn't restaurant it doesn't work, work anymore it doesn't work anymore. you have to be you know the either you hire the professionals or if you know Learn like a, a shop by then you have to do yourself let, let me let me explain to you something when i came back here in 2018 the business was quite slow and one of the first things I realized is, like I said earlier, consumer dining trends have changed. Social media is actually at the forefront of every um, dining scene that is out there at the moment. If you don't utilize the social media properly, you will miss out on miss customers. Out. And that is something that I learned as soon as I came here. Yeah. I, we've, like I said, we've had this restaurant nearly 30 years. I've been back twice to pick up the business after um, our previous partners um, haven't been able to run it properly. And the previous two times, I was able to come and my presence alone here was enough to build the business back up. This time right now I came, after 15 years from the last visit, and I found my presence alone is not enough anymore. Yeah, Shab's pull doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, so all of a sudden, I'm like, oh my God, if Shab's pull doesn't work, what am I gonna do? And that's when I realized that everything's changed. So I had to learn how to use Facebook. I had to learn how to use Instagram. I had to learn how to take pictures. I had to learn how to take good pictures because the initial pictures I took yes. were rubbish and people weren't responding. I had to learn how to be engaging with people on, oh. on the platform. I had to learn to have a relationship with my customers other than in the restaurant at the table. I had to learn to have a relationship with them on Facebook. Facebook. And the reason I learned it is because I quickly realized the quickest way to reach a thousand, two thousand, three thousand of your customers is through the press of a few buttons on that's your right. mobile phone. Oh, right. Whereas before, 20, 30 years ago, you sent out 5,000 leaflets, 10,000 leaflets, you put a, leaflets. Yeah, which cost you, <laughs> which cost you uh, I don't know, uh, leaflets about 50,000, 800 pounds. 800 pounds, yeah. If you put an advert in the newspaper, it cost you another 800 pounds. Now, 
It's, it's, on social media, when you're doing it yourself, if you're capable, then it's free. free. But even if you go to a company, um, so, such as Cog Social, you know, you're looking at £500, £600 a month, which is what? Compared to £800 for leafleting, compared to uh, uh, £800 for a, for a TV uh, 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 magazine advert, it's, it's, it's nothing compared and to that. And now, it's it? a, one thing good side is uh, like, a, like a lot of restaurant owners, they're not comfortable with the mainstream, uh, like a mainstream marketing people's or people's. people's. Now, our community people like you and uh, Mohamed. So you guys are on the marketing side. Mm. It's to be, it's very rare to find Bangladeshi people are doing ecosystem. Bangladeshi people are doing the marketing. Mm. So now we don't need to afraid for that as well. So we got Time our uh, yeah. If you, one thing I would say is a lot of us are going into this trade, coming from the restaurant. Yeah. yeah. So we know no, exactly what the restaurateur wants, what his customers want, and then we provide a service that ticks all the boxes mm. for 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 the restaurateurs yeah. and their customers base. You know the uh, as I said, uh, you know the there's a you know the online ordering system is mm. in the main screen is very highly competition now with mm. the drivers and without drivers and mm. with the very high fees. Yeah. Mm. So say example yourself, you start an online business, an ecosystem you're selling. Mm. Uh, what's the good reason I have to come to you? Yeah, no, rather than uh, you know the the main scheme online order systems. And if I come to you, and how you deliver the customers? Uh, for your system, I can get the more orders. Can you explain that a bit? Well, the first thing we need to look at is third-party applications. How does a third-party software make money off you? So, you're a restauranter, I'm a restauranter. I approach, the third-party approaches us, they give us an online platform, they put the orders through, but the hard work, who's doing that? We're doing that. We're doing the cooking, we're doing the prepping, we send sending the food out, money. we invested many in the restaurant. All of that hard work is done by us, sure. but they take their percentage, 20% I've heard, 30%, 40% I've heard sometimes. Yeah, so you're working in essence for them. Now, question is, have you opened your restaurant to work for them? No. No, you've opened your restaurant to work for yourself. For so what do, you want to, what do you need to do to capture the online customers that they're capturing for you you need to have your own online ordering platform. So Elipos Systems, what we do is we create your own online ordering platform. It will say Lal Haveli online platform. Your orders will come through there, your customers will come through there, it will come to you, and all the money is generated from that website is now yours. You're not giving 20%, 30% to... So you're not going to charge 10%, 15%, 20%, nothing? Well, no. The, the setup fee. The setup fee, the monthly hostings, you have the usual standard things that you need to pay for a business, um, but in terms of percentages, 20%, 30%, 40%, no. Because I started Elipos to help my fellow restaurateurs. Now, if I start charging the kind of prices that's not helping you, yeah. is putting you down, then that completely defeats the object of Elipos Systems. Yeah. Because that's not my objective. My objective is that I'm successful, my restaurant's successful, alongside me, you're successful, he's successful, we, Bangladeshis as a be, unit. Yes. So, uh, Shabbai, you mm. set up for me ecosystem. Mm. Everything is done, yeah? Mm -hmm. So how I get the traffic and customer to come to me? Well, that's his job. Well, basically, with um, a lot of people, because they're not marketing effectively on social media, they're not getting the traffic to their own online ordering system, whereas third-party platforms are actually doing the marketing on your behalf, but then charging you stupid commissions, basically. Mm -hmm. So if you learn or hire a professional to do your marketing for you on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, you direct that traffic to your own online system, mm -hmm. and then you'll start to build a regular database of customers ordering off your platform without paying any commissions. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Shabai. Thank you very much, Mohamed Bai, for your uh, nice advice and the supports for the restaurant. So one, uh, I know today, like uh, what we know and also the viewers know now, is, is if you are a restaurant, you have to do, like uh, either you hire a professional who can do marketing for you, mm -hmm. or you have to learn yourself mm -hmm. to boost your business up. Absolutely. No other way. No other way. Mm -hmm. So now let's uh, test one of your dish, one of your uh, restaurant signature dish. Can you ask your chef to make for Absolutely. our viewers uh, the recipes?
Absolutely. Let's go do that. Let's go to the kitchen. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm here. You can see Stigli Balti kitchen. The chef uh, Joel Bai with me. So thank you, Joel Bai. Allow me to come in your kitchen. Thank so you. What you are going to do show us today? Well, I'm going to cook uh, morsa mackerel. Uh, It'll be fresh to cook, yes. It's stuffed with the uh, red pepper. Okay. I'll be cooking that and a railway ghost and a lemon chili rice, lemon chili rice. which I'll be cooking in front Sound of you nice. and prepare it in okay. front of you. Okay. Hopefully, you should enjoy it. I can't wait anymore, chef. It looks delicious. So let's test. Yes, you, you first. Mehmet, no, 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 I think yes, you, I think yes, chef, yes, yeah, yes, chef, yes, 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 chef, chili. Wasabi is chili. It's spicy. Then mackerel is the fish that we use for wasabi. This mm. is a traditional dish. It's Every, very traditional. Everybody is a Bangladeshi. Maso sabti tahe. And it's my favorite as well. It's presented really nicely and it's cooked exactly the way you have all your sabtis at home. So Kunuchimoy uh, people have. Something with herring, with sardines. Here we've just done it with mackerel. mackerel yeah. It's very delicious. Mind? Very flavoury. It's real traditional Bangladeshi chutneys. Mm -hmm. The fish chutneys, yeah. Very nice. Taste, taste this rice as well. I'll give yeah. you a lot of the honours. It's That's different in unique. That one. Yeah. Mm. You have to taste that sauce with a bit of it's that rice. This railway dish boost. It is railway dish. You can get the flavor of smoky. Yeah. Yeah. And the like an authentic taste of Bangladesh. And the like authentic spice flavor in this dish have. Thank you very much, chef. Four to very five tender. hours to cook that dish. Four to five hours. Complaining every day. <laughs> it, it takes that long. But the flesh to prepare the meat. To prepare the meat in a low tender. heat. With the spice. This is why this is our signature dish, and also every single customer to date that has had this, they absolutely that. love it. Definitely, they have that to. Is, hmm? One, one. Now, the, the the thing about that is Ooh, the Bengali customers, dish. the Pakistani customers, Indian customers, they love it. Everyone the English like customers it. like it. The foreign customers, everybody likes it. It is this is the dish customers. I like it as well. Mm -hmm. This is home style, the proper home style, and you presenting home dish in your restaurant. So thank you. you. This you is must the come to Street the boat here and try this. Oh, Railway ghost. Railway, Railway ghost. ghost. ghost dish. Absolutely mind If you don't try it, you will miss it. I'm telling you, this is absolutely amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you very much. Thank, thank you. you very much. Amazing. Hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. If you like it, subscribe it to our channel Chef Abuls and don't forget to visit Stickly Balti in Birmingham. Thank you very much.